Welcome to the Futurist Freelance Podcast, brought to you by Zolo, the operating system for the solo economy. Every week, we're serving up an audio cocktail of expert tips, inspired insights, and stories from the frontiers of freelancing to help you grow your borderless business to new heights and live life on your own terms. So kick back, grab a snack, let's get started. Today, we bring you an interview with Ulana Vilimets, who is the team lead in business development for the e-residency department in the government of Estonia. Now, she is far from my typical image of a government employee, and Ulana has personal background as an entrepreneur and business owner herself, which is invaluable when she comes to supporting e-residents and helping them navigate the extensive ecosystem of support and services that they have in the e-residency marketplace. And in this conversation, we explore much that's unique about the digital governance systems in Estonia. And I learned about the way e-residency extends that offer to bring similar benefits to freelancers all over the world. We dig in a bit to who e-residents are, whether there is such a thing as a typical e-resident, and all the different kinds of businesses and services they're offering, and that e-residency supports them in providing I found this interview really insightful in terms of understanding the business atmosphere and culture in Estonia itself, as well as how the e-residency programme fits into a growing range of digital residency programmes emerging around the world post-COVID. So I'm sure you're going to enjoy this one. So Ulana, it's lovely to have you with us at The Future is Freelance. Thank you for joining us. I know that you are the team lead in business development at the Estonian e-residency department, and I want to hear all about that in just a minute. But I'd love to know a little bit more about your background first, particularly as you are supporting freelancers and entrepreneurs in your role. How did you get here on your own personal entrepreneurial journey? Well, actually... um... Uh, maybe a small story to tell you when I was uh, when I was 23 and mm-hmm. straight out of university then um, the, instead of starting to find a, a real job I actually uh, registered a company just in case um, because it's so easy in Estonia and I figured that you know maybe maybe a company or a, or, a, or a team does not need me full time but maybe they'll have a good project uh, that I could do um, so I registered a company just in case to be to be able to actually take on these projects as a freelancer and and uh, do this for, you know do this in a very flexible way for myself so so I actually I, I have had a company for a very very long time. Um, but uh, for <laughs> for the last uh, ten to twelve years, I actually um, I ran my own uh, business, and uh, that was not a freelance business. It was a business with uh, um, actually in one I had fifty uh, guides across uh, Baltics and uh, Central Europe wow. because we were doing small groups, mm-hmm. um, different day trips to beautiful scenic places outside of the cities. Um, so we took people on uh, tours. And uh, then uh, for uh, uh, seven years, I also uh, built a travel platform, which was called Like Local, which basically gave you the advice of locals community. So like we could go to, let's say, Paris. You don't go to the obvious, very touristy places, but instead you can see what like somebody who lives in a city, like what do, what do they recommend? Brilliant. Okay. Well, that sounds like the perfect background for supporting new freelancers and entrepreneurs in the Estonian e-residency program. So let's back up a little bit. And for anybody who's not presently an e-resident or is still doing their research into the program, can you summarize it in a nutshell, what it is and what are the advantages? Yeah, so so maybe even to before we talk about the e residency, let's talk about Estonia. Yeah. Estonians are super spoiled. Um, we have enjoyed uh, these e services uh, already from nineties, basically. Mm-hmm. So 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 it's it's based on our ID card, which mm-hmm. is a digital uh, digital uh, identity uh, which you use for logging into all uh, public services, also private services like banks. Um, and uh, everybody has a unique code, um, and the government can say whether you are you or, or or not because you also have like you know a pin one and a pin two, and it's it's all very secure. Um, and we've we've done this for for forever. Um, when I was a student, I went to work in the United States, and when I told my friends there how we declare our taxes in Estonia, uh, <laughs> for 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 ninety nine percent of the population, the the tax declaration uh, is pre filled, and you simply click like. Uh, forward, forward, submit, um, and you do not even have to put anything in there because everything is already there. Um, so so this, is, this seemed like 
out of the future for, yeah. for a lot of people. Still is for the US. <laughs> I think that would blow people's minds. <laughs> Yes. So, so basically, e residency is 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 nothing else than than the extension of this digital identity that every Estonian has. It's a, it's a similar kind of card, uh, except for it doesn't function as a travel document, and it's not a real mm. real residency or real uh, visa or to the country or anything like that. It's just a digital ID, yeah. and you use this digital ID to log in to anything that the Estonian government offers online. And uh, we use a lot of these services and on daily basis. For example, you go to the doctor, your doctor gives you an e-prescription. So you go to the pharmacy, the pharmacy gives you the medicine based on that. So so for us, there's there's a lot more. But mm-hmm. the, the main thing that the e-residents or those who are, who are not living in the country can take advantage of is our paperless company management, mm-hmm. um, which means that the commercial registry accessible online, you log on, you start a company, it takes about 15, 20 minutes to go through the process and you sign it digitally with this uh, e-residency card. Then on your um, you know, monthly reporting, the same thing works. You, you log on to the customs, uh, tax and customs board, you, you fill out your declarations and, uh, and uh, that's the same way with everything that you have to do for your company. There's never really a need to show up here in person in Estonia, um, nothing is ever filled out on paper. It's quite strange for Estonians when our business partners from other countries want to fill out something on paper, or when they <laughs> when they want us to stamp a document with a you know like with a <laughs> ink stamp. <laughs> yeah. So the, so this this is essentially what e-residency offers uh, an opportunity to start a business in Estonia, which is in the EU. And to do it completely remotely, completely paperlessly, and uh, and that's that's a big thing for a lot of yeah. people. Yeah, well, I could definitely bear witness to all of that um, as a Brit living in Spain. I know lots of businesses around here; they still love to photocopy bits of paper and stamp them as approved by the the designated authority. Um, and obviously, setting up business in Estonia is a completely different experience. The rest of Europe is catching up digitally, but there's nothing to compare to that centralized experience. COVID, COVID did a lot for that. Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, I think that there's, and Estonia was a model for all of us during COVID, I think, to see how things could be supported in terms of continuity so much better. Um, but for the businesses that you work with then in terms of developing the residency scheme, what kind of support do you offer? What what does your day-to-day work look like nowadays? So my team, the business development team, is responsible for three uh, three big areas of, mm-hmm. uh, of, uh, of the program. Uh, one is um, creating an ecosystem for uh, a foreign uh, entrepreneur or a freelancer who, who is starting a, a company in a jurisdiction that is not their own. It's, it's not your mm-hmm. home country. So, so obviously that's a big step. Um, and even though Estonian public services are all available in English, all our laws are available yeah. in English, everything is, everything is quite transparent, there's still a big step to take. And, and uh, if you're not an English speaker, then, then obviously you would want somebody to speak your language. Like you, you have an accounting question or a tax question and you want to get, uh, get serviced in your, in your own language. So um, we have created something called the, the, the marketplace. Uh, maybe the name is a little bit misleading, uh, but, but basically it's, a, it's an ecosystem of uh, different companies and service providers that uh, somehow uh, contribute to running a business through Estonia. So there are Estonian corporate service providers who, um, who speak different languages, who have different degrees of uh, automated service. So for example, um, solo, right? This is, is mm-hmm. at the, at one end of it. Like it's, it's super automated. You start the company through your uh, interface and you invoice through this interface. You do all of your company management in one place. You so easy. You, you never ever go anywhere else. Um, and, and then you can get bits and pieces of it as well. Like you can get mm-hmm. just the, just the address, uh, service that you need to have in Estonia or you can, you can just get an accountant or, or somebody else. So there's, a, there's a range of different services that you can get. Then obviously the next big question is, is how do I do my banking or, or how do I receive money or how do I get money from my customers? Get paid. How do I get paid? So, so we, um, we make sure that we always have uh, good partners among uh, fintechs mm-hmm. and, uh, and banks. Um, so, so we, my team is directly responsible for like basically like scouting all the time for different uh, financial service providers to be able to 
to offer this to e-residents so that they would also understand the concept of e-residency because it's 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 an easy concept to understand that you could be sitting in Spain such a, you know just like you you could be sitting in Spain be a citizen of another country and then run a business through Estonia so so that's that's something that is you know it's brilliant <laughs> it's not yeah. comprehensible for 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 some people right um so and then also tax uh, advice uh on the local uh, side so when you um when you are a resident of one country, you run a business in another. There's, there's, you know, mm -hmm. cross-border taxation issues that uh, that might uh, uh, face you, and uh, that means that we need to make sure that uh, our uh, um, marketplace has also these kinds of companies who can help you on the French side or on the Spanish side or on the, I don't know, um, UK side yeah. with your with your taxes. So, so that's 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 the that's the marketplace development that we do, the ecosystem development. But my team is also uh, responsible for finding partners in, in our target markets. So expanding the, the program basically mm -hmm. in different countries, finding uh, interesting um, uh, businesses that somehow can plug this e-residency into their uh, services and uh, work mm -hmm. through those partners as well. Uh, and then the third big thing that we do is, is finding new use cases for e-residency because this obvious mm -hmm. uh, small and medium-sized entrepreneur who can take advantage of this paperless um, business management this is just one use case mm -hmm. for e-residency. But a digital signature could do so much more, like uh, like we have in the works, for example, like discussing one right. um, copyright uh, digital copyright management platform, for example, and 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 some some other interesting things that may grow out of this uh, government-issued digital ID, for example. Definitely. And it's amazing to see how that marketplace has grown and exploded since I joined the e-residency program four years ago. Um, there just seem to be more exciting new providers in the ecosystem every month. Um, given this diversity, this is a, might be a difficult question, but what's a typical e-resident, an e-resident business? Is there such a thing? That's a very good question. Like, I think I, I usually like to start from like, who are e-residents, like mm. in terms of uh, nationalities. Yeah. So we, we, we have a lot of, uh, we have one big group of uh, e-residents who are from uh, those uh, well-established old European countries, right? So we have a lot of Germans, Italians, French, um, uh, Spanish people. Mm -hmm. And I, I would say that the, the, the main reason for them to uh, come to Estonia, become an e-resident and run their companies through Estonia is, is because of the paper heavy and, and maybe like high bureaucracy levels in their, in their, in their own country. Right. So, so that's, that, and, and, and obviously like there's, there's no problem with the reputation of Germany or like you, yeah. you are, you know, if you have a German company, you're, you're respected. Right. So, so for them, uh, the, this, this side is not so important, but then there's a, other big group of entrepreneurs who are from countries outside of the EU. And they sometimes need a stamp of approval in a way that they are established in the EU and they have a company here and, and they are taken more seriously by their partners or their clients or, or uh, they can get access to uh, international payment solutions or e-commerce platforms or other yeah. kinds of services where, where they don't accept uh, their country. So, so they, they basically open a door for themselves being established in the EU with the help of Estonian e-residency. Yeah. So, so first uh, avoiding the bureaucracy and, and paper, and then second opening the door to the EU. So, so uh, where this, um, what sectors or where, where, where this makes sense is that if you're doing cross-border business, usually, if you have a, I mean, if you have a cafe, um, a corner or a corner store, then mm -hmm. having an e-residency card does not make any sense uh, yeah. for you, right? So, so basically, it has to be an international business, uh, more more service businesses than than products. Mm -hmm. Although e-commerce is a growing uh, growing sector as well, so so in that sense, like it does work for physical products in in certain cases. Um, uh, we have companies uh, who are owned by. Germans, they import something from China, they sell it in Germany, but the owners live in Bali. So, so, so it could be something like, like this, a very cross-border setup. Um, then we have a lot of uh, uh, digital service providers such as uh, web developers, designers, uh, uh, also yeah. some copywriters, yeah, content creators, uh, digital marketing service providers, people like that. So, so um, they usually serve uh, big companies as their as their clients, and and they have to somehow invoice them mm -hmm. and some, yes, somehow indeed. be um, legit 
and and that's that's why they choose Estonia because it's such an easy place to do it from and and nothing stops when you live in another country for example for a while and and you can still do everything online which is a which is you know not the case everywhere and then and then we see a lot of tech i guess uh, a lot of tech companies as well because yes. um Estonian uh jurisdiction is is very good for uh, scalable startups um for for many reasons for example we have um we have made it very easy to um get investments into a company you do not spend uh thousands right. on lawyers and getting everybody to the notary office together mm. thanks to this uh um um, possibility to to basically do it all digitally and online and and we also have a very good um legislation for giving your team members uh stock options uh in your own in your own startup because that's a that's a, that's a way to motivate the growing uh growing business uh team yeah especially at the moment hiring is so competitive in the startup ecosystem that's a huge benefit isn't it to be able to offer straightforward stock options that are really attractive to the people you're hiring so yeah that's great and Estonia also uh, developed uh, something called startup visa mm-hmm. uh, which is is also a really good thing in combination with e-residency because you become an e-resident you start a company in Estonia your company can uh, apply for the status uh, that makes you eligible for startup visa right so so if your company is this kind of a scalable global uh, company then uh, you're able to relocate yourself to Estonia um, as a founder, but you're also able to bring employees um, to work in Estonia on easier terms right. than uh, than the regular companies. So, so in that sense, it's a really good uh, good scheme uh, for growing companies. I personally took advantage of it when I was building my startup, uh, hiring a developer from Turkey. Um, so, so th- Turkey is outside of the EU and it's actually really complicated to bring somebody from there. But with the startup status, the startup visa made it super, super easy to bring him to work, work in Estonia. And he still lives in Estonia. So, uh. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> That's lovely that, yeah. And it means people can then take advantage of sort of the remote work visa and all sorts of things to really tap into that. It seems like this amazing crucible of startup ingenuity from a small country that's launched so many unicorn success stories to the world. So there must be something very special about physically being around that vibe as well. Oh, definitely. The, that e-residency makes possible. The ex- ecosystem The ecosystem is what's uh, really uh, valuable, I think, here, because um, I think... Uh, there's this sense of pride, uh, to, you know, small country and uh, everybody wants to uh, have some kind of a, a, a part in the success story. So, so we are, we are helping each other. We are uh, connecting you with the people you need to know in Estonia. Like I met uh, one Fantastic. e-resident who was a Mexican startup founder who had arrived uh, in Estonia a few weeks before I met him. And he already knew all the key people from the local ecosystem by the time I ha- I met him. So it was just amazing how, how, you move through this small community and everybody introduces you to the next uh, person. You get all the advice and all the experience that you, that you want to learn about uh, very easily rather than uh, somewhere um, where not everybody knows everybody. (laughs) Hmm. (laughs) Or there's more of a sense of competition rather than this kind of collaboration and mutual support that Estonia seems to surface all the time. It's really quite an amazing thing to be part of, even at a distance. I wonder, do you have many people um, from the UK post-Brexit who are wanting to keep a foothold in the UK, in the EU, um, um, despite being in the UK? Yeah, I think it's more and more of a, more and more of a topic. Um, from, from what I know, I've been talking to uh, different organizations in the UK and, uh, and uh, due to the way the current trade agreement um, is uh, uh, done, um, the UK entrepreneurs are looking for uh, for a way to to have a, an EU entity um, to continue mm. doing cross border business in a in a more advantageous way. And uh, it's actually um, interesting that uh, other countries have also obviously discovered this that uh, Holland is marketing yeah. uh, themselves quite heavily to the UK entrepreneurs as well. So right. uh, as as a place yeah. to establish in the in the EU. So we we, we do see that a lot, and um, and Estonia may not be as well known. Uh, in the UK, as as maybe some other countries, but we are uh, we're definitely doing our best to also uh, spread the word uh, there. Absolutely. Well, this is probably a good moment then to talk about how the whole 
digital identity movement is taking hold globally. And Estonia was clearly the first people doing it. I mean, you've been doing it since the 90s <laughs> for your own residents, and you are the most digitally enabled country. But in terms of the other e-residency type options you've seen emerging, what differentiates Estonia still? And why should people come here first? Well, obviously, we we keep uh, we keep an eye on all the all the programs that are uh, uh, popping up everywhere. Um, each each country has their own sort of um, strategic goals, right? Mm-hmm. So, so for example, Portugal is uh, is very much about bringing people to live. Yes, they want the digital nomads to come, and yeah. <laughs> Exactly, because they are losing losing population, and and they want people yeah. to 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 move there, and so so each country has their own separate uh, you know aim with the with the, this kind of a program. Either it's uh, some kind of a, a special visa program, or whether it's like an e residency mm-hmm. type scheme. Like we we here in Estonia, we don't care if you come here or not. Like we we actually like let yeah. let you have your business in your own country, even if you never set foot in Estonia. Though I do recommend visiting Estonia when you get the chance, but I can confirm that you don't have to, and I haven't been. Well, I haven't been to Estonia since co- before COVID, so it proves you don't need to go. Yeah, and and I guess COVID also gave um, a really good push to a lot of countries to start the, mm. developing this kind of a, a, yeah. a digital ID in the sense that you you see that you know if you have to close down the whole country, um, then how do you how do you maintain um, certain um, relationships with the with your citizens so mm-hmm. it's like how, how can they how can they get the services from the government that they need so so many countries started developing these kinds of uh, digital ids uh, with covid which i i think is a, is a really good thing because uh, uh mm-hmm. it's becoming um, i guess it's becoming like a norm that uh, that you have to have this right um lithuania recently launched their e-residency program um i i can say that uh uh it's a little bit more difficult to get it because you have to visit Lithuania twice for example uh to right. to to become an e resident of Lithuania so so there the different programs have their pros and cons um mm-hmm. and i think for for us we we look at it not like oh like you know we get a new competitor but we look at it like hmm, like let's let's see how they do it and what they do um compare and see where the the potential for developing what we do even further lies because because yeah. we obviously we need to keep up with the with the competition and uh, it's something that we cannot uh, ignore that other countries are are um, uh, doing uh, this as well I suppose it's a bit like Solo's position in the marketplace, that it is very much part of a movement and an ecosystem. As it develops through the world, you start to see the differentiation of different providers and different schemes, and people will be able to choose what's right for them when they understand clearly where, what their needs are. So I know that the Estonian e-residency program has been differentiating themselves by moving into different markets and opening new pickup points for the ID cards last year. Can you tell me about what kind of events and outreach you have on the horizon for 2022? What's what's coming up? So yeah, last year we had this. Uh, it, w- it was a big news for us because uh, the e-residency cards can be get uh, can be picked up from our embassies, and as a small country, obviously we do not have embassies in every country in the world. Although e-residents do come from like hundred and. 80 mm-hmm. countries in the world so, yeah. so somehow they've, they've they've found us but um we opened uh four really far away locations for ourselves with the help of an external partner uh including brazil south africa uh, singapore and uh, thailand um, and it's it's been really interesting to see mm-hmm. how um uh, Brazil has had really good response uh, because Brazilians, obviously, that's it's a it's a huge population, and uh, yeah. and uh, they have even before before opening the pickup location somehow found their way into the residency program. Either they have gone to the United States or they have gone to Europe to pick up their cards. But but there are Brazilians already like before the the pickup locations uh, opened there. Um, so we've done uh, we've done different events. Um, uh, some some markets are a little bit like further, I think, than than the others. Uh, Brazil probably has has uh, had the most success uh, for now. 
Uh, mm -hmm. We in this 2022, we are going to uh, be present in several really really big tech conferences in Europe. So uh, so if uh, if some of the listeners have a chance to to join us, like we're going to be face to face events are coming back. People, <laughs> it's really nice to see people again. Um, even yes, though it's great yes, to be yes. able to communicate like this and collaborate, then yeah. I think it'd be great if you're in what so which events are you going to be at if people want to come and meet your residency so for 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 instance uh, in uh may uh, obviously we have the the flagship uh, startup conference in Estonia mm -hmm. latitude 59 which will bring an international audience here as well but then in june we'll be in london tech week okay. we will also be in south summit in spain And then in the uh, fall, uh, we have planned uh, bits and pretzels where we mm -hmm. do a, a, a pretty big uh, thing. Um, that I'm going to keep it a secret for for now. What we're what we're who, who do we have on stage there? And okay, well, you'll have to come back and tell us about that in the autumn. So <laughs> once you're allowed to share a little bit more, um, so it it looks like. It's going to be just keep expanding e-residency. Um, what do you have for sort of specific targets? Are there numbers that you're hoping to achieve? Or at, at what point will there be more e-residents than Estonian residents, I wonder? Not next year. <laughs> Not next year. Okay. <laughs> Yet. Uh, but but e-residents will become the second biggest uh, city in Estonia. Wow. Okay. Mm, passing yeah, t passing Tartu. Uh, so so uh, so that's definitely going to happen this uh, this year. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have so so we have we have set our um, targets in a way that we hope to achieve a certain uh, percentage of mm -hmm. growth in the markets where where we have uh, 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 proactive. Um, marketing and business development uh, activities. So we have set our goals like to certain markets that we want to achieve uh, growth from these markets. Um, and then we are also uh, basically like um, going more deeper into a country mm -hmm. uh, so that we find more specific use cases in each country. So, so um, what we want to do is that we want to uh, understand the needs of like certain sectors mm -hmm. and segments uh, a little bit better. Um, so we're testing this this year with um, Germany and uh, Spain and a little bit later in the fall also with uh, with UK to, to understand like whether um, within our, you know, sort of broad um, uh, techie, Uh, 35 year old usually male um, digital entrepreneur whether whether there are other segments on the side mm -hmm. of this this typical uh, segment and and go really deeply into these to understand uh, where they get their where they get their news from like what are their uh, pain points and and really like uh, talk yeah. to them Uh, more That's great. Uh, with our marketing and other other things as well yeah so getting away from maybe the the typically resident if you had to point to a tech entrepreneur or a digital nomad or somebody to support different kinds of business use cases well it's, it's our bread and butter still yeah yes <laughs> fair enough and and you know it's great it's it's kind of obvious if you have a service provider business that operates globally that you need a framework like this i suppose it's trying to reach people for whom the use case might be a little less obvious but could still be a really excellent fit and you know i hope we'll reach some of those people with this podcast and start to we're going to be talking to lots of different new residents and telling their stories which we hope will bring to life some of the alternative lifestyles backgrounds approaches businesses and goals that people can bring to the table so um, I hope it's going to be exciting. And these stories are super inspiring. Yeah, and we've got some amazing people lined up already, even for these opening few episodes, and we've got lots more planned for later in the year. Um, because as you said at the start, it is an ecosystem and there is this sense of everybody wanting to support and lift each other up, which is really refreshing in business. I think many aspects of business are so competitive, but the startup scene in Estonia is like a breath of fresh air. Um that there is this mutual support going forward. So if people want to know more about the kind of events you're doing and how to keep in touch with you, what's the best way for them to do that? Is there somewhere people could sign up to get more information? 
Yeah, we have we have a um, we have a really good uh, newsletter uh, that comes mm-hmm. out uh, every month uh, where we where we talk about the events where we will be uh, going to and and also different uh, um, campaigns that are going on with one of our service providers or or um, or other kinds of news what we have made better in the product or or you know basically everything that you need to know about the residency. Yeah. Um, so if you sign up uh, to the newsletter, then that's that's one really good channel. Obviously, social media. Is, a, is, is another way to keep in touch with us um, on our own website um, eresident.gov.ee uh, is uh, something called event calendar um, right. that has yeah so that, that that would have all of the all of the main events where either we'll be attending or that we were uh, that we are organizing ourselves so and they, they are uh, in different languages um, mm-hmm. there's there's going to be uh, an event uh, this Thursday to uh, Ukrainian uh, entrepreneurs who have relocated right. and uh, and we can offer them right now e-residency for free with reimbursement Brilliant. from uh, from different service providers also Xolo uh, Xolo has uh, joined yeah. our our uh, campaign for this and um, and uh, yeah there's there's different things going on and uh, and we are really transparent and open with everything that we do. So we, we share a lot and, and keep everybody posted. Fantastic. No, that's brilliant, the Ukrainian angle. And I know that Estonia, maybe simply because of the size and the digital background to Estonia as an ecosystem, as an infrastructure, seemed to respond really quickly to offering those services to Ukrainians as they started to have to very sadly flee their home country. Um, I think it's amazing that people can take that digital identity with them if they're already an e-resident or they can quickly access a new Mm -hmm. digital home. You know, it's it's not the same as when you have to leave your physical home. And I know that the e-residency doesn't confer any nationality, um, but I think it must be a certain amount of comfort to people on the move if they at least have that digital identity that they can take with them, even if they don't know when they're going to be able to return home um, or where they will end up settling. So it's I, that's another thing that e-residency has really offered to Europe and, and to people globally. I think that's really exciting to be involved with. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us about the program coming up? Anything you would like potentially residents? If somebody's listened to this so far and they're thinking, I really want to know if this is for me and I'm going to find out more, what would be your final words of wisdom to those curious people? Yeah, so so there's a definitely also a community of entrepreneurs and e-residents are a really inspiring bunch of people and uh, they, they have their own little organization that's called uh, Erika, which is with two E's, um, uh, that is a representative uh, a, a representative uh, NGO uh, for e-residents and, uh, and uh, the community itself is organizing events sometimes uh, that are worth checking out in different cities. They have little meetings meetups of digital nomads uh, where, wherever there's an active community member on spot and then we also have a community manager here in our team who who actually organizes events um, uh, in other countries but but also in Estonia because uh, e-residents sometimes uh, uh, come to live in Estonia and uh, and uh, there is a good number of active community members here in Tallinn as well who to who to meet and uh, um, come and ask questions from at one of these events even if you're not the resident yet or uh, or just like kind of flirting with the idea so it's it's worth to come to one of our events and talk to other other residents as well and and then every month we run um a regular uh q a session where where we uh, answer questions with the, the team uh sometimes i'm present sometimes uh, somebody else is present and and we run through the main facts and also uh take both uh uh, registration questions and uh, live questions uh, at the same time and they really like uh, go really quickly through some of the main facts uh, on your residency. Brilliant. Okay. Well, it sounds like a really comprehensive support network that really will help people from their initial curiosity about maybe launching a business without borders to right through to their growth and their funding and the social support that you need in order to thrive in business. Um, That really is an excellent overview of the Estonian e-residency program. So thank you so much, Ulana, for joining us on the Future is Freelance show. And I look forward to having you back later in the year to tell us more about the events you have coming up in the autumn. Thanks so much and bye for now. 
Thank you so much. You've been listening to the Futurist Freelance Podcast brought to you by Solo.io, who offer compliance, taxation, invoicing and admin solutions for fiercely independent solopreneurs across the globe. From simply getting paid to launching a full EU-based limited company, Solo has you covered, thanks to Estonian e-residency and a superb suite of streamlined business software. If you enjoyed the show, please like, rate and comment, and subscribe to our feed wherever you get your podcasts. 